Hey, it's Dr. Ron Eglin here, and I've got another programming video um, that we're going to work on as we go through here. So this is going to be a JavaScript, a little bit of HTML, a little bit of jQuery, some jQuery UI. So we're going to be doing a, um, a little bit of a lot of a little bit of everything. And I have a game. So game programming is one of the highest forms of programming because there's usually a lot of challenges that you can have in game programming. So let's look at the game itself. This is a card game. So we're going to look at drag drop capability um, and game logic. So I'm going to deal a card and down here you got this three that dealt and I'm going to pull this three and I'm going to drop it on the one to the two. Now the game itself necess isn't necessarily terribly important because um, it's a math game and I can drop a three on a one and a two because one plus two equals three. Um, I'm going to have to scroll up and down a little bit. So I have a zero and a zero and a two. Well, zero times two is zero. So that works. And I'm going to actually show you. Okay. Oh, wow. We're getting lots of. Uh, okay. So I got a two. I can't really drop a two. The two won't. Oh, yeah. Two times one is two. The two will drop fine just right there because it's a math fact. Um, the game is a math fact game. So let's keep doing some cards here. I got another zero. Uh, two minus two is zero. Boo yow. Now I'm kind of stuck because I'm going to need a zero to. to fit there. So now we'll start dealing cards. Two plus three is five. That fits there. And notice that when I drop it, it snap drops in. So that's one of the features that we're going to have when we look at the code. Um, I keep dealing cards. Now here's, I, I've left some bugs in here. This, see that seven, when I drag it, it just kind of disappears. That seven drags around, but this other seven doesn't. So that's actually kind of one of the clues of where the bug is, the feet, the, which is not a feature, it's a bug. We're going to fix it later. Um, and I'm going to throw it, and so, see the same thing will apply to the four. That four drags around, that four will not. Um, there's a reason for that, and we'll get into that reason. And I got even more for us in sevens. Well, the whole point of the game is to get to completing this pyramid. Um, so I need a zero, I need a zero or a two there. I'm going to need something to go with this two and the five. That'll fit there. But if I had a two there, I could put that three would go up there. But let's actually now move to the code itself. Because that's what I'm really trying to, to, to highlight. Since I'm in JS Fiddle, I can drop right down into code mode. And the first part of the game is, uh, first part of building the game itself is actually kind of simple. Because that's the HTML piece where I basically, what I really just do is I throw out a lot of div elements as placeholders to put stuff in. Now, I did put a couple of things in there like this button. So I have a button of type button. Um, that's actually not how I would normally put a button there. I'm kind of, I'm leaving some things in a one form that I'm going to come back and refactor to another form. But one thing that I do want to point out is um, when I, if, if you look at this HTML code, you'll notice that there's not really anything other than a bunch of divs. There's no cards or drops or anything. So we got to build all that. That's when you get down here into the good old JavaScript. And we'll kind of bring that JavaScript window up there. So the first thing that I, uh, and when you're designing the game, you got to sit down on a piece of paper and start thinking about how are you going, what elements are you going to have in the game? But more importantly, because in JavaScript, everything is identifiable by, by an ID, how are you going to manage those names of all the elements? Which, by the way, is leading us, will lead us to the specific uh, bug that we found in the, in the pr program. We know why that bug is there and how to fix it. Now, the thing about that bug is if you were building the game and all of a sudden you're like, well, that card doesn't work, but that card does, why? Um, there are ways to solve that. I'll, in fact, I'll go kind of a little bit back here to the show. Um, I'm going to bring it back up. Now, of course, what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of all these, um, the, my last little set of, of dealt cards. So I'm going to have to throw some more cards out. So I'm just going to deal out a bunch of cards. And if you look at this, this seven drags, that seven does not. Well, that in itself might be enough of a clue to figure out what is happening but, but I can do the good old control shift I, and I can bring in the inspector. Uh, I know you can't really see a lot of this, but I can bring the inspector and that's, well, unless my programming, cause my inspector is, there we go. So you can kind of narrow in on these guys and notice that the image pound C7 and image pound C7 
but the one is draggable. This one is not. The nine is draggable. The six is draggable. One seven is not draggable. One seven is. Well, doik, um, they both got the exact same name. So that in itself should be a point to that. Okay, one item here is not going to behave like the other. They have the same name. The other thing is to point out is like here I've got, you remember I said I named these elements, all the droppable spots are good old divs, and they've all got a unique name. So now let's go back to the code. Uh, I'm going to be showing this code in multiple videos, and we'll go ahead and get rid of the uh, inspector elements there. So putting it together, naming, really important. So these drop spots, there were five on the top row, four in the second row, three in the third row, two in the next row, one in the last row. I decided a naming convention of one, 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 two, one, three, four, and one being the row, and then the second one being the column number. But the column numbers actually go down by one. I mean, they go, they, there's multiple, but there's less in each one. And uh, because the game is designed so that a card is dropped between two cards, and you have to use a math fact to figure out where you can drop the cards. I have this, uh, this basically uh, JSON here. I'm using JSON. But I have this JSON element that is the parent. So I know what is the parent of each of, of the spots. So 21 parents are 11 and 12. It's the two drop spots that are above it. Now, people that are... Coding purists are going to shout at this. They can just shut up because I'm going to show you multiple ways to do things and I'm going to refactor them. Now, programmers by nature are inherently lazy and can always look for the easiest way to do something. We're the only people that will spend 40 hours solving a 10 hour problem so that they only have to do it once. We're really good at that. Engineers are kind of like that too. And I'm both. So uh, I'm going to try to find the easiest way to do something, even if it costs me a lot more work when I'm trying to figure it out. But the reality is, is I need to put all these um, drop spots in the on the play board. And the board is this um, element called pyramid. Up here, it's a, there's a div called pyramid. And I'm going to put things on that pyramid. Now, there's a lot of ways to do that. And one of the simplest and oldest and tried and true is simply get the element by ID and add some HTML to it. But what's beautiful about this is that in the JavaScript itself, when you add the HTML dynamically to the element, so basically, so I'm using the inner HTML here, and I'm adding divs, and these divs are dynamically being generated, and you see a little bit of math, and you see this ID equals drop, blah, blah, and you see this top equals and left equals, well, that's just me giving it a name, and the big thing is um, making the sizing and the location correct. And I'm doing that by literally putting a string into the inner HTML of that element, which is a pretty amazing thing that, that, that the browsers can even do this, but that, that's kind of what they do. So if you were to look at this, you would say, okay, he's got a div, he gave it a class, it has an ID, the ID, unique ID is coming out of this um, two-dimensional array drops ID, which by the way was up there. I defined it in my um, early, earlier in my JavaScript. It's got a data, data card, it's got a style. Now, worth noting, this is one big string. Um, it's, it's what it is. So. Um, inside the string, I've got single quotes and I've got double quotes because if I'm creating a div and I'm setting the class equal to drop, but the div is created as a string, the class equals drop, the drop inside of that is also a string inside the string that has to be enclosed in quotes. By using single and double quotes, you can make this whole thing work. So that in itself I'm going to kind of limit each lecture to 10 minutes. This is part one. But that in itself, I was able to do to create. First, I gave these drops all names. Then I came down here 
And again, if you are a programmer, this is going to make perfect sense to you. The first row had five elements. Easy. There's also five rows. So for i equals zero to i is less than five are the rows. And then j is each of the cards in the rows. And since the cards in the rows decrease by one each time, that's pretty easy to do. j equals zero, j is less than five minus i. Well, i was the first loop. So each time you go through, you've got one less. And then you just put a few little mathematical pieces in down here to put it in the right place. Uh, it's not really trial and error because I did work it out because I knew the size of the images that I was going to have for the cards. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to drop some cards on that first row to seed the whole thing, to get the whole thing going. But for right now, I wanted to, you to see the game. I wanted you to see a little bit of the concept of setup of the game. And then this concept of this dynamically HTML, inner HTML piece throwing a div into the middle of another div that actually has dynamic elements in that div with IDs that we can manipulate, which we're going to do, by the way. So part one, done. I'm hoping that you enjoy, and we're going to go through parts two. I think I'll be able to do this in three parts. So good programming. Talk to you in a few.